Hey everyone, this is Karen Waxman, founder of Retail MBA. Today I want to talk about selling to Piggly Wiggly stores. So if you have a great consumer product that you think should be on their store shelves, this little training will give you some things to think about in regards to selling to Piggly Wiggly. So what is a Piggly Wiggly? It is a grocery chain. It has uh, It's a supermarket in the Midwest. They have over 499 stores they're responsible for. That is tremendous buying power. So some of you have never heard of a Piggly Wiggly because you're in a different part of the country. And so I create these little trainings to give you some ideas of places to sell to because you might not have thought about selling to them. So Piggly Wiggly is actually um, just a really solid store. They basically are um, selling a variety of different products. So obviously all the perishable foods as well as other types of foods and so forth. So what can I tell you about selling to a 500 chain store retailer? Uh, number one, that's major money for you and never discount them just because of their name. But also because they have such tremendous buying power, they are very finicky in regards to what product they put in their stores because they get to work with the best of the best. Usually the manufacturers, the top ones, go after the bigger ones, the retailers that have the tremendous buying power. And so uh, there's a lot of competition going on selling this type of retailer. So you got to come in with strong with a kind of new, interesting innovation or something exciting or a really amazing price. There's got to be some reason that the buyer would be willing to swap out your product for someone else's. And so that's something to think about. You really got to think about what's your story in regards to uh, you getting a mass uh, grocery chain to say yes to you. Um, and part of that is either new innovation something exciting to the market and or your price is just so much more phenomenal than everyone else's. Uh, the thing about Piggly Wiggly that could help you though is that they are independently owned. And so what that means to you is that some retailers are really um, high stress on the corporately owned stores. In Piggly Wiggly world, what that means is that you could conceivably get in your car and go drive to a Piggly Wiggly and see if the store lead would be willing to purchase products from you on an individual store basis. The reason that matters is because you could sell to one individual Piggly Wiggly store and then ultimately keep going and opening up new accounts. Now, some retailers, you can't do that, but with Piggly Wiggly, if they're independently owned, they have the ability to buy on an individualized level, which is very exciting for you because you can tell people, I've sold into a Piggly Wiggly, even if it's not all of their stores. Why that matters to you? Because all the other grocery chains really want to hear about you having success stories at bigger grocery chains. And so that is something that you consider. So not all Piggly Wigglies will be able to buy from you on an individual store basis, but you should definitely go explore that. And sometimes people will go and say, well, I don't want to do that. I want to work with a distributor. But sometimes the distributors won't pay attention to your product until you've already sold your product there first. It's kind of the chicken or the egg scenario. You know, on the one hand, uh, they want you to let them know about new products. On the other hand, they usually want you to sell first and then they'll take on your product thereafter. So opening up some Piggly Wigglies will, accounts will allow you to find out what it's like to sell these stores, what their problems are, their concerns are, and then handing that over to a distributor to be able to scale it for you. And that's usually where a distributor comes in it's pretty annoying because you want the distributor to open up these accounts on day one, but a lot of times they don't until you have proven sales yourself. And so that's why I share these little strategies to give you some things to think about in regards to selling to these different retailers. Um, the only other thing I would tell you is that because they work with distributors, a lot of the times um, you can sell to them without working with a distributor, but a lot of times a distributor is going to play in because they need to streamline their process in regards to bringing products into stores um, with uh, perishable goods. There's a lot of other concerns. And so distributors streamline shipping and deliverability and so forth. And if you have to work with the distributor, they will be taking a piece of the pie, which means that they are expecting a better deal for them in order to resell it to the stores. And what that means for you is that you need to make sure that you understand your pricing. You need to make sure that you have a cushion to work with these distributors and ultimately that leads up to the retailer and also you know there's other issues involved with grocery change and that sometimes a marketing strategy would be that you would discount that product on store shelves to get someone to buy your product over someone else's but if you're dealing with a distributor and then you're dealing with a discount 
of that special marketing promotion or whatever it is that you're trying to do to move products off store shelves, it can be very stressful for you as a manufacturer and you do not want to do deals that is not going to make you money. And so if a buyer says to you, yes, I'm interested in working with you and they are the buyer at a Piggly Wiggly, what you want to do is make sure that your margins are there, that you have room for the distributor if that's what they add next you know they may buy from you on an individual level but then they say well you got to work with our distributor to continue on make sure those numbers work and never say yes to a deal unless you can afford it we want you to succeed and part of the problem people have with grocery chains is that they're spending so much money that they're not making any money and so you can avoid that simply by looking at the dollars and cents and then also looking at what the distributor wants and make sure that you can afford it. And if you can go for it, it's a lot of opportunity, but if you can't say no, walk away, do something else. There's a lot of ways to sell your products into stores. If you want to learn how to approach pitch and sell to retailers like Piggly Wiggly, please take a look at the link below. Our company is called Retail MBA. We've talked and helped over a hundred thousand people through how to approach pitch and sell to retail chains. And we would love to support you in getting your products in the stores. So take a look at our free trainings. Also, please like, subscribe, comment below, and go to our website at retailmba.com. Karen Waxman, Retail MBA. Hope these little nuggets of wisdom help. Thanks so much. Hey, everyone. This is Karen Waxman, founder of Retail MBA. Today, I want to talk about selling your product to AMPM. So if you have a great consumer product that you think should be in their stores, this little training will give you some things to think about in regards to AMPM. With that said, let's get started on today's training.